Um, so, um, developing an ontology from novel agricultural data. So, um, I'm, I'm working with WeFarm for this project. Um, the first time I heard the word ontology, I didn't know what it meant. It just means like a process, basically. So, yeah. So, now you've learned a word today. Um, so, moving on. So, the problem of WeFarm, WeFarm is the world's largest digital farmer to farmer network. Um, and they enable farmers to connect with one another, to, to share, solve problems, share ideas, spread innovation. And they, they work online and over SMS. So um, what happens is that if I'm a farmer I don't know, in Uganda, they work with East African farmers mostly, if I'm a farmer in Uganda, I have a question, I text it to WeFarm, and WeFarm take that question and they text it to another user in the network who responds to that question. So that's how um, WeFarm works. And um, so the problems that they were trying to solve, so the current ontology for this discovering topics is very basic. So basically, the way they labeled um, the topics for the questions, or if it has chicken in it, or oh, it's chicken. If it has, um, I don't know, fruit in it, it's fruit. So it's a very basic ontology, and there wasn't a high level um, topics that you could really extract from. Um, they have limited insights into the, the connections between the topics. So they didn't understand, I don't know, how chicken related to selling or the weather or whatever. They didn't want to understand more of that. And they received a lot of duplicate questions they already have good answers for. So um, they wanted to identify a list of frequently asked questions. So for instance, if, you get a, if you, they get a question, because it costs money to send SMS, because uh, when you text WeFarm, when they reply to, another, to, to you, it costs them money to send to reply to you. So, um, so yeah, so when you get a lot of questions, and if you already have an answer for that, for a similar question, you can just send them that direct, directly. And this is an example, oh, it's really very low, let me see if I can, but this is an, an example, can you guys see that? No? Just read it. Okay, so <laughs> uh, this is an, ex an example question. So, hello friends, please advise on good foliar fertilizer for boosting two weeks old peas in the farm. So, can I ask, what topic would you label that? Anyone? Fertilizer. Yeah, exactly. So, no, no, that's quite good. So, fertilizer is probably um, the, the high level topic. So, that's essentially what I'm trying to solve with this. So, um, and I work with Nargis on this, by the way. It wasn't just me. So, we had um, in total, I think, like four different approaches in total. And I took two certain approaches, and Nargis took uh, another two separate approaches. Um, so there were two um, approaches I took. So one was topic modeling. And so we had um, 336,000 um, English questions. So the data set was full of like Kenyan, Swahili, so many different languages. And I don't speak any of those, so I just said I can focus on just English. Um, so we focused, uh, the first approach was topic modeling. And topic modeling, we used um, an algorithm called latent directly application. And it's basically a statistical model for abstract discovery of topics and documents. And um, um, what, what it assumes is that documents are probability distributions over latent topics, and then um, topics are probably probability distributions over words. So um, documents with similar topics will use similar group of words. So for instance, let's say you have a document uh, from um, a science magazine versus a football magazine. Uh, there's specific words that will appear in the science magazine that wouldn't in the football magazine. So that's um, the high level. Um, Meaning. So the next one. So what I used was um, um, LDA. So this is what I. This is my result from um, from um, LDA. And you can see um, these. Um, so you can see this is um, topic one. And you can see these are the, the most occurring words in that topic. And if you if you look at um, I am the one who labeled these. So this was the how I evaluated it. It was essentially like an eyeballing technique and see if, see if it made sense. But if you can see, it doesn't really really make sense. Some of these topics. So it wasn't a very good model. I can just. Let me just show you something quickly. So, yeah, so if you have with this, you go to nine, for instance, you have fruits, um, cost, um, kilograms, seeding, seeding, um, tree, buy seeds, bag fail, black piglet, bee. It just didn't really make sense, most of the topics. So, um, I effectively said, okay, this um, algorithm is not really the best. So, uh, yes, give me one second, let me get back. And then when you go to those topics, um, these are the frequently um, occurring questions in each topic. So if you see, for instance, you can see in topic one, I milk my cow three times a day. What should I feed her to produce more milk so that I can milk four times a day? And then you have, um, I have a cow which gives me two liters of milk per day. What can I do in order to get liters of milk? So you can see that cow occurs frequently in this topic one, which is, I guess, good. And then you have something like, I don't know, topic five. Um, I need land for hiring around... 
I need land for, I can't read that. Walking, <laughs> Walking around. So you can see there's land, there's land. So I mean, just looking at the questions, uh, they were decent, but they weren't good enough. Um, I sent this to my correspondent at WeFarm as well, and he wasn't really too happy with, with, the, uh, with the result, so he didn't think a lot of it made sense. So I said, okay, I'm gonna discard um, topic modeling, and then I'm gonna take another approach. So the second approach I took was um, paragraph vectors. So um, it's an algorithm uh, called Dr. Vec. It was um, written and developed by the same person who developed word to vec um, Thomas Mikulov. And it's basically just an unsupervised learning framework that learns continuous distributed vectors representations of pieces of text. That's a long sentence. Um, and it can be applied to sentences, phrases, or large documents. And these are just the, the parameters of um, the model. So um, my vocabulary is 14,000 words, and I just took a, it, it had to occur a minimum of five times. And the dimensions I found that worked very well were 200 dimensions. And over these two diagrams right here, just the two different implementations of, of um, Dr. Vec. So with um, distributed memory, the first one is similar to um, continuous back of words in um, for word to vec. So basically, you initiate um, a, a, a vector, a matrix, randomly for um, the paragraph ID, and then you try to you use the context of these. So you use the cat sat, and then you try to predict on, and then you do that. You keep tweaking, tweaking, tweaking until you have a good enough vector that predicts that on. So that's what um, the distributed memory is, and the good thing about that it keeps the context of the words in place. And then the next one is a um, distributed bag of words. And this is more um, similar to the skip gram model for um, Rod to Vec. So what, is, what you do with this is that you have your um, paragraph ID. You initialize this random vector. And then you take, uh, you, you sample a uh, random set of, um, of words. And then you try and predict one word in that sample. So it's, the, it's effectively the reverse. It's the exact reverse of that one. Um, so yeah, so how did I do with Dr. Vec? So you find that um, Dr. Vec, it was quite good. Um, so how I chose to evaluate it was um, I was going to infer vectors for existing questions in the corpus, and it check if these questions, they rank high in the list. So this question, for instance, this actually existed in, the, in my database of questions. So is they, there's a lot of misspelling, by the way, so that's the farmers, not me. Um, is rabbit a urine used in manufacture of fertilizer? And you can see that um, there's very good you can see is rabbit urine poison or fertilizer is very similar. So the similarity score is a cosine similarity, by the way. And um, so yeah, you can see that you have very good results. So rabbit urine is the fertilizer. What are the process of using urine from a rabbit as a fertilizer? So these are very good results. But then the real test is that if I throw a new question at it, how is it going to actually relate to other documents? So then I ask it a new question, where can I sell maize? And then these are the best um, questions it, it came up with. And you can, sell, you can tell from these that there's a lot of sell, 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 sell. So just quick test the model. I want somebody to ask me a question that has to be obviously related to, um, related to um, farming. And I'm going to see, see where it falls down. Hold on, let me just get to it. OK, so what question do you guys want to ask? Me? Does anyone have a question they want to ask about farming? Any? Random question. This, this, this doesn't come to the questions at the end, right? Sorry? This is not one of the two questions you have to ask. <laughs> no, 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 no. Where can I sell my chickens? Okay. <laughs> so, uh, let me spell that properly. Where can I sell my chickens? So, those are the results of the question. So, how much do you sell in beans? <laughs> if I plant snow peas, where will I sell them? How much is union sack sold? So, sold, sell, sell, sell. <laughs> You can tell um, at, the, um, at the main topic. So you can essentially group this as um, selling questions. So, you know, this is something you'll be able to, if you get a question like this, where can I sell this? Then you, you, you try to look through your database of what, what users answer um, selling questions, and then effectively look for where sell and chicken occurs, and then try to revert. And maybe if it's a good answer, send that answer to that person. OK, so hold on. Back to this. Yes, so the next thing I did um, to try and understand more of um, what was going on in my data set was I applied good old T-SNE. So um, this was, this was the, the, <laughs> the results I, I, um, I got from, from um, T-SNE. And um, you can, um, yeah, so I mean, it, it, did, it did do a good job in terms of make, um, putting similar questions together. So for instance, all those questions that said thank you, thanks, um, thank you, thanking you. Um, these questions are passion fruits, <laughs> that, you know, talking about location, Kenya, Nairobi, um, talking about dairy, milk, um, it was talking about health, like diseases, treatment, sickness, and all that. 
So it did a reasonable enough job. And yeah, and then this is just a whole bunch, like, all oh, this is basically like all chicken. Most of it is just, <laughs> most of it is just chicken. So, <laughs> so um, and um, I, I did mention at the beginning that um, the labels they gave us, so this was meant to be a supervised problem, where they gave us questions and they gave us the topics, and they were going to essentially um, make a supervised building problem. But what Nargis and I found out, the labels they gave us were essentially terrible. They're very basic and they didn't do a very good job. So, um, so that's why we had to treat it as an unsupervised problem. So my approach was um, with this, with, with um, this was okay, I'm gonna um, look at all the questions, then I'm gonna cluster them, and then I'm gonna label the questions by which cluster it falls in, and try and predict that way. So what I tried was, um, I tried DB scan to, uh, to, to do the clustering, and it, um, one of the parameters came up with um, 28 different clusters. Um, I see most of them at this, this particular cluster. It didn't do a very good job, I'm gonna say, but, um, the problem with this is that I visualize it with TSNI, and TSNI doesn't necessarily, um, it doesn't keep distances or keep densities um, in, together in a, in a lower dimensional space. So for instance, if I use a different uh, method to visualize this, I'll probably get better results. But you do have to remember that this is 200 dimensions, and TSNI tries to condense it to two. So there's gonna be some distortion. Um, yeah, so, so then um, now I'm going to ask you a, a typical Rotevec question. Um, I had to do this because everyone seems to do Rotevec. So um, cow is to calf as big as to, who wants to guess? Piglet. Correct. <laughs> Correct. And just to prove that I didn't make that up, I just put the code there to show you how pig is to calf, calf is to piglet. Yeah, for some reason chick comes up as well. I don't know why, but, and then so, I don't know what that is, but yeah. So. Um, yeah, uh, the next steps, um, more clustering. So I want to use the clusters to um, essentially label the questions to turn it into a supervised learning problem. So you can, um, so the idea is that when, uh, when, they, when they get a new question in, we predict what cluster it falls in, and then uh, you can find it with the FAQ, we can use it to, to label the topics better. And um, I want to use a multi-dimensional scaling as opposed to TZ to visualize, because uh, apparently that's the better <coughs> job of um, conserving distances um, in lower dimensional space. And then um, the recommendation to reforms for a better label data set. So I think they need to do more work in terms of um, labeling data sets and it has to be done manually. But um, yeah, that's it. Any questions? <laughs> 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 So did you do like any uh, spelling correction for this? Okay, okay. So, so, so um. Going to those, you can make. Yeah, yeah. So um, okay. So um, I tried to use um. There's a pack called Python spell mm. to to do that, but then it broke my Python installation because uh, it was some <laughs> random package from somewhere. I didn't. So for one week, I was literally trying to reinstall my, my Python installation, and then I tried to um implement Peter Novix. He has a spell checker he put online. I tried to implement that, but it was just very slow. So I just effectively didn't do that. So if, if you do do spell it, if you do have correct spellings, you probably get a much better, much better um, result. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. I, I, just just a, a, a thought from the little bits of NLP I, I've touched. If you're dealing with, in their quite short questions, which when you tokenize them and remove stop words become even shorter. Yeah. Um, have you thought about something like you, the, the jacquard distance, which essentially you look at the, the ratio of intersection of a set to union of a set, basically how similar are things. Yeah. So if you almost have, you know, type questions about how do I, you know, cure my chicken if it's ill, and kind of if you're only dealing with eight or ten words, just the overlap of words yeah. might take you quite a long way in terms of is that is that similar enough or not? Yeah, that's true. Um, I mean, I did read something about that on. Um Stack Overflow, but um, I didn't really understand it much, so I decided, okay, I'm going to stick with cosine similarity or cosine distance um, for now. And um, the Dr. Beck, because I use Jensen Dr. Beck, and the, the most similar, this, this is cosine similarity they use in the implementation. So I decided to just go with that. But yeah. that is something I could possibly yeah, use as a recommendation. It's a lot quicker if you have a deduction. Okay. Because you don't have to do much calculation to work it out. Just, yes. just thought. I'll, I'll, I'll send you a link. Yeah, yes, please. Yes, please. So you, uh, you got 28 clusters. Did you look at some of them to see if they, like, the, the things that are clustered in the, in the same cluster make sense That's together? That's a very good question. <coughs> Let's go to this. Not this. 
because yeah so apparently so you this you so let's do so you can see how this they have different clusters here let's zoom in on that one this is bokeh by the way which is very good so you can see how you have um, this blue cluster there hold on yeah it has a you can't read that but um <laughs> It, it, it basically makes sense that it's not clustered with, with this one. If you actually look at the, the individual questions, right. um, it makes sense that it's not clustered with any other, other those. And um, I do admit that I have to do more parameter tuning to the DB scan because I'm more, mm. the first result I got was just one cluster um, with um, some noise, and I was I wasn't happy with that. So I tried to tune it to effectively pull out more clusters. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, no, I think there's there's definitely more um, tuning and possibly use a different um, clustering algorithm to, okay. to to deal with that. So yeah, that's one of the next steps is more clustering and more um, fine tuning that essentially. Okay. Yeah. Thanks, Rudy. No problem.